In today's video, I'm going to be doing a lot of CAD, a lot of CAM, and a lot of machining to create a cool looking utility knife holder, all in an effort to test out this new 4-axis capable desktop CNC machine. Eight months ago, I uploaded a video testing out the original Carvera machine from MakeEra, and this machine is insane. It's everything you want from a hobby desktop CNC machine. It's got an automatic tool changer with 4th-axis capability, closed-loop position control, it's accurate, quiet, with built-in dust extraction fully enclosed, the list just goes on. Unfortunately, all of these features come at quite a high cost, about 6,000 US dollars, and this is way too expensive for most people, and that's understandable. This is a premium, top-of-the-line desktop CNC machine. So to combat this, MakeEra have stripped out some of the non-essential features of the original machine to create a more cost-effective version the Carvera Air. This product has just launched on Kickstarter and it retails for about a third of the cost of the original machine. MakeEra have sent me a pre-production prototype to test out and that's what we're going to do in this video, find out if it's any good. To test this machine I want to make a complicated and organic part that's going to require a lot of finishing and utilise the 4th axis capabilities. This is a perfect opportunity to mess around with generative design. I think that the organic shapes created by it will be perfect to test this machine to its limits. So generative design is an algorithmic design tool. In this case, the user puts in a bunch of forces and geometry constraints, and then the algorithm tries to provide a variety of structural solutions that satisfy those constraints efficiently. So the first step is the CAD modeling, and I'm gonna be using Fusion 360 because it's got the generative design tool and the CAM all in one package. I sketch out the size of a utility knife blade and then import a canvas of the photo of the handle that I like so that I can trace around it with some splines. This strange handle shape is from a knife that I've made in a previous project. It's quite a weird shape with a thumb grip down the spine. I quite like it and I think it would make quite a good utility knife handle as well. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about how I got the generative model to work. It requires quite a lot of fiddling around to get the right parameters, but that's not really the focus of this video. In this case, I was just using the generative design geometry as an inspiration to actually then just completely remodel my own part. Modeling this organic curved handle in the way that I wanted it was quite a lengthy process and took longer than I was expecting. As an engineer, I'm used to just making simple prismatic parts, so it was a nice challenge to have to create something so organic with so many interacting compound curves. I think this type of modeling lends itself better to surface modeling than solid body modeling, but I was just doing it in Fusion with the tools that I know already. I ended up making the curved surface of the handle with just a bunch of lofted profiles. Probably wasn't the best way of doing it and it was quite buggy, but it worked in the end. After getting the handle looking pretty good, I then went and modeled the attachment point. I just kept it really simple for this, just two M3 threaded holes through those two indents in the back of the blade. This is what the first iteration of the finished handle looks like in the CAD. It's got a lot of detail, so it should be quite tricky to machine. For the threaded holes at the front, usually I just tap these holes by hand with a thread tap, but you can actually do it in the machine with a tool called a thread mill, something which I've never done before, but I've always wanted to try. I want to run a thread milling test on a piece of scrap first, because I've never done it before. So I set it all up in Fusion. First, you just drill a 2.5 millimeter hole. Then you come in with the correct thread mill, and then you spiral out of the hole and cut the threads. So, over to the Carvera. I want to thread mill this piece of clear acrylic so that we can see what's going on inside as it cuts. The first step in running the program on the Carvera Air is loading the touch probe. Here you can see their manual tool changer in action. You just pull down this lever, put the tool in the collet, and then put it back up and it's in there solidly. Other than the manual tool changer, the Carvera Air still has the automatic touch probe, automatic tool length sensing, and a laser to frame your toolpath. Once that's done, I can load the 2.5mm drill bit. I was quite conservative with the drilling cycle, making it full retract every time it pecked half a millimetre. The drilling was fine with no issues, and the next step was the thread milling. I was quite nervous watching the toolpath wrap it into that hole so quickly, but everything went absolutely fine. And it was really cool watching the threads being cut into this transparent material from the side. I could have definitely upped the feeds and speeds to make it cut faster, but there was no rush, and the threads fit perfectly first time. It works! So, I'm happy with the thread milling, and it should work fine in metal as well. 
The next step for me was to prove that this blade attachment geometry was correct and that it was going to hold the blade in nice and securely. So to do that I wanted to first just machine this front pocket where the blade drops into to avoid machining the whole thing and find that there's some missing geometry in this section. So I quickly got a toolpath ready with the thread milling included as well and got a small piece of aluminium scrap to try it out on. You can see the framing laser on the touch probe nicely outlining where the toolpath is going to be on the metal. First step is an adaptive milling toolpath to clear out all of the material in this pocket using a single flute 1 8 inch end mill. On this test I'm not going for a good surface finish, I'm just trying to remove the material really quickly and you can see the machine's doing a decent job of cutting it out. Once the pocket's all cleared out I then come in with a 1.4mm single flute end mill to just take out a little bit more material in the corners so the blade can fit all the way into the slot. Next came the drilling with the 2.5mm drill bit, which still went pretty well, but you can hear the 200 watt spindle starting to bog down as it's drilling through the material. At this point I was still a little bit nervous about thread milling in the aluminium, so I put a tiny amount of WD-40 in the hole, just to give it a bit of lubrication. In the end I reckon I definitely didn't need this. But the thread milling went really well. And you can see that the tiny little M3 screw fits in very nicely. Nice. And I can also check that the blade fits nicely in the slot and lines up with the holes that I've tapped and it all looks good. Confident that the blade geometry will work, the next step is to make the toolpath for the entire part. This was a pretty long process, it took me a couple of full evenings of work to get it done because this is quite a complicated part and there's a lot of different operations that need to all be done in the correct order. One of the challenges with machining something like this on the fourth axis is you've got to be careful when you cut away certain bits of material because you don't want to just remove all of the material attaching this to the chuck at the very start then the setup's going to be not very rigid and your surface finish is going to be terrible if you can even machine the part at all. So I'm removing the material from the middle first and then working towards the ends. In the end this has definitely turned out to be the most complicated toolpath that I've ever made. There's something like 58 different operations with 7 tool changes and it's going to take over 5 hours to machine. So hopefully it's worth it. Finally it's time to machine this part. The first step is just adding in the 4th axis module onto the machine. This is located on the wasteboard with some dowel pins and just bolts in and plugs into the side here. The first test is with a piece of aluminium flat bar. I can clamp it in the four jaw chuck and then I've got a small centre mark in the very end for the tailstock to support it. First operation is taking a 3mm drill bit and drilling some entry holes for machining out the central pockets. I was a bit too ambitious with the feed rate here and I managed to stall out the 200 watt spindle so I cancelled the operation and went at a slower speed next time. One thing that worried me slightly was how much the aluminium in the middle was deflecting while I was drilling it. There's a lot of material hanging out that's completely unsupported, so I'm worried about vibrations when it's being machined. Next step in the toolpath is hollowing out these pockets in the middle. And I am getting just a little bit of vibration and chatter, but with conservative feeds and speeds it seems to be within reasonable limits. After clearing out the pockets on one side, the fourth axis rotates 180 degrees so I can clear out the other side, and this is where I broke my first tool. I didn't set the clearance height between tool paths high enough in Fusion 360, so as the part rotated, it crashed into the stock and snapped the tool. Another tool ends up in the ever-growing, rather expensive box of shame. I corrected the offset in Fusion 360 and reran the tool path, and this time you can see it just clears when it rotates over. There's quite a lot of excess material on either side and it would take a long time to machine it all away. So instead I'm going to try and use two different slotting toolpaths to slot it out and actually just cut that material off. That went mostly without issue, it was a little bit nerve wracking when those big pieces were flying off though. After facing both sides I then swapped to the 2.5mm drill bit where I can drill the lanyard hole and the two holes for attaching the blade as well. I then used a ball nose end mill and a series of radial tool paths to finish the inside of those pockets. I 
After finishing the inside of the handle, it was then time to finish the outside surfaces, and I did that using a rotary parallel toolpath, just constraining it to the outside faces that I wanted to finish. And this was by far the most satisfying part of the toolpath to watch. I literally just sat there and watched it the whole time. It was really nice watching the simultaneous 4-axis machining. After completing most of the finishing operations, it was then time to carefully remove some of the material from either end of the handle. I obviously couldn't get rid of everything because I still needed the material to be attached to the fixture. So I left a few small tabs of material to hold on to the part with still. After that, I come in with the tiny thread mill and make those two M3 threads at the front of the blade. The final step is taking the 1.4mm end mill and machining away most of those tabs so there's barely anything holding the part on anymore. And here's the first finished part on the machine. The tiny tabs are really easy just to break off and then it's just a small amount of cleanup to file them off and smooth everything out. So I'm pretty satisfied with the way that this part came out. The surface finish is decent and it fits really nicely in my hand. I'm happy with the shape and ergonomics of the handle. It's a little bit fiddly to get the M3 screws in at first, but once they're in, the blade is very secure and you just have to loosen them off a little bit to remove the blade and replace it. But the goal was never to make it out of aluminium. This was just a test piece. I wanna make the final piece out of brass. I made a couple more small changes to the design, just rounding things over and moving some of the fillets around. And then I also changed some of the tool paths so that they'd run a bit smoother. But overall, everything stayed pretty much the same. I cleaned up the machine and then I could load in a nice big chunk of brass, ready to machine it all pretty much to dust. Brass machines so nicely on this machine and it also looks so much more aesthetic on camera, so I'll just leave you to enjoy some of the footage without me talking over it. Wasn't that nice and relaxing? Those slow motions and time lapses made it all look like it went very smoothly, but in reality it was a bit more like this. Anyway, the finished piece looks so much better made out of brass, and it breaks off just as easily as the first one, and then there's just a little bit of cleanup to finish it all up. And this is what the finished handle looks like when it's made of brass. It's so much better than the aluminium, brass is such an awesome metal. I particularly like the slightly ribbed texture on the back of the handle. It gives the knife a little bit of grip and makes it feel really nice to use. The surface finish is pretty good in most places. There are definitely a few places that I want to improve upon it, but that's just going to need some messing around with the feeds and speeds and order of operations on the machine. The knife works pretty well and I quite like this design. I might try and develop it further in a future video and try and create a quick release mechanism for the blade. And more importantly, despite missing some of the nice to have features of the original Carvera, this machine is definitely still very capable. It doesn't make the original machine completely redundant, there are a lot of features of the original machine that I really like. It's also definitely more accurate, more quiet, and more rigid, and you'll get better surface finishes, better tolerances of parts on the original machine. But if the $6,000 price tag was too high, then this machine might be worth considering as a more budget-friendly alternative. I've got a link to the Kickstarter in the description down below if you're interested in checking it out. 
just to point out the obvious fact that there are always risks with backing a Kickstarter project, even if it does come from an established company like Makera. But if you're willing to take that risk, you could pick up this machine at quite a discounted price. Anyway, this has been a really fun project. I've enjoyed making it, and I hope that you've enjoyed watching it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.